It's been one of the most intriguing and interesting transfer windows in Premier League and European history. We saw both Cristiano Ronaldo and Lionel Messi join brand new clubs. Man City spent £100 million on one player. Arsenal were the biggest spenders, but their fans are still the most unhappiest in the big six in the Premier League. We're here today to rank the very best transfers and the worst transfers this summer. There's a list of some of the most expensive that we've seen across Europe this year, including Jaden Sancho, Upper Meccano, Konate, Emi Buendia as one of the highest transfers. You can see the man like Ben White at 50 million pounds as well. We're going to be ranking. We're going to be going through this in detail today. You know the rules of engagement when it comes to these ranking shows. All of our panelists get a pick. They get to play somebody wherever they want. We'll debate it. You can get your super chats in to move people up or down. You can put them into flop. You can create your own tiers. If you are brand new to the Football Terrace, the Football Terrace alumni created the tiering system. Five pounds to move somebody up or down any box. 20 pounds to move them anywhere. 50 pound if you want to create a brand new tier. Now, remember, we didn't set those standards. You, the viewers, did. So we're just paying homage to previous donators to the Football Terrace, who we respect massively for help keeping this platform going. Of course, we can't let you do the same thing for less. That'd be very, very disrespectful. But without any further ado, let's get the panel introduced to you tonight. It's going to be fire. We've got man like KJ back in the house, refreshed, ready to go, eating his cereal after a big day in the gym. Speaking of a man that needs to go to the gym, Sonny is here. Look at him, moustache gone, hair looking good. He still has an eye on these green screen sheet, but there we go. Speaking of hair, one of the worst haircuts on the football terrace. No, it's not Jem. David is in the house looking, I would say fresh, but he isn't. Same t-shirt, three days running. I cannot believe it. Igao is in the house. Look, he's actually smiling. An Arsenal fan with a smile on his face. He won't be by the end of this stream, I'm absolutely sure. And we have a very special guest tonight, ladies and gentlemen, back on the terrace after a long time away. One of the best Chelsea content creators on the planet. Man like Dammy, the grand dam is here in the house doing things. Look at that. See, looking fresh, happy, smiling like all Chelsea fans. Boys, how are we all this afternoon? Good. I've changed my shirt. I'm not having this. I've changed my shirt, definitely. <laughs> I'm doing well, doing well. Yeah, I'm there, we go. there we go. I'm, 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 man. I'm excited about this show because I've actually had enough of like, there's so much negativity flying around and I'm like, these tiering shows are always fun. The viewers always back us massively. There's no doubt about it whatsoever. Definitely going to have uh, a lot of a laugh in this. One. Violated David. Listen, it ain't my fault David don't wash his clothes. Like, ain't on me, is it, bruv? Like, just speaking facts here. Just speaking facts. But there we go. We're going to jump into this without any further ado. Otherwise, the debates will start ahead of time. I'm going to go first to... I'm going to go to the guest first tonight, the main, the, the, the special guest tonight. Dami, I'm going to go to you first, brother, and I'm going to pick your first player for you to place anywhere you want on that tiering system. And I'm going to give you... We'll start with an easy one, I suppose. I'm going to give you Tammy Abraham to Roma, one of the most expensive transfers Ooh. this summer. Where would you place a man like mm. Tammy? Tammy, big man Tammy, you know, man like Tammy, Ibram. I think um, for Roma, I think that's a good signing. I think that's a good signing, good money for him as well. I'm not going to come out and call him a class sign. I think he's quite a solid signing for them. I think he's always been quite a good uh, striker for Chelsea, but he was just never meant to be the main man. So good signing, isn't it? Do you know what I'm saying? I don't see anyone else disagreeing with that one, but um, yeah, it's, it's a good sign. And also, like, they only paid five million for him this year, innit? So they're going to pay off in installments. It's worth every penny. It's worth every penny, in my opinion. Yeah, I, I agree. I think it's a very good bit. Of, I mean, I actually forgot how it, overall the transfer that they're at 34 million, one of the most expensive this year um, of any club in Europe. But he's already started well, hasn't he? He's got a few goals in the opening games. He's been there. He's, mm. he's, he's done really well. Are you gutted, Egal, that you didn't land your one of your main striker targets at Arsenal in Tammy Abraham? No, nah, we never wanted Tammy. Let's keep it real. He went to Roma. He's going to do well at Roma. At the end of the day, if we don't move out Lacazette or Aubameyang, we're not going to get in a replacement striker. It just didn't make sense. You offered him a contract, brother, and he agreed to it. I understand that. The club might have wanted him, but as a, as a fan base, collectively, we did not want him. And when it, comes to, when it comes to club making decisions that we don't agree with, they always tend to do that. So what are you going to do? Do any of you think Arsenal are going to regret the decision to not land a Tammy Abraham, a goal scorer? Nah, he had to go to a different league for me. 
had to be like a Syria, and I think he's done that now. And I think he's gonna he's gonna ball out there. What's well, I'd say class signing for him now. I I just think Arsenal, I think Arsenal needed like any striker because I just see Aubameyang and Lacazette just traject like the trajectory is going down, and currently under their management as well, they're just. Doesn't look like it's going to be again. I don't think Tammy Abraham was actually the answer. I probably think they should have gone for Danny Ings actually, but you know, Danny Ings isn't flashy. So after what they need, that's what they need, man. They need God. They need deliverance from a higher power. They can't do nothing without it. I'm telling you, fam. Guys, well, after what did you did out yesterday, I ain't taking no more Chelsea agents at Arsenal. I'm telling you that right now. I don't want none of your players. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, nah, I don't think the environment was right for Tammy Abraham. He's already just come out of an environment where. The coach didn't like him, and half the fan base didn't like him. Now he's going to go to a different environment where the coach is questionable in the first place, and also the fan base, half of them, will be on his case from as soon as it comes through the door. So he made the right move going to Roma to a place where they're showing him love. Mourinho is going to develop him. Um, Arsenal right now is a very questionable place to go to as a football club right now. So he made the right move. There we go. There we go. Yeah, I saw Drogba's tweet as well. Um, clearly a bit of banter, but uh, cutting deep with those gooners right now. So I'm going to go to Sunny next. CFC Sunny, and your first pick I'm going to give you is Donnarumma to PSG. Um, I'd go class signing. I think I, I would have said good signing, but after the Euros, I mean. What he done for Italy, it's got to be class son. And he's about six foot seven, something like that. He's going to ball out with Messi, Neymar, Mbappe now. He's going to he's gonna do bits for them. So I say class signing. Yeah, I mean, uh, KJ's waggling his finger. As much as uh, Don Rim is a class goalkeeper, he actually wasn't needed. He, 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 he wasn't needed. Let's be truthful here. Navas, Kaylo Navas, is one of the most dis disrespected goalkeepers in world football. Because everywhere he goes, them man bringing someone else who's a bit younger to go and replace him. And now it's just like, why did you need to replace Navas right now? Like, he's, he's stable, he's solid, Champions League winner. I swear he has three. I get trying to, like, move for the future and stuff, but the fact that they kept Navas and they got Donnarumma, for me... Not, he's not no, needed. Not to say that. Wait, say that. Wait, 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 wait. Not to say that he's rubbish. It's not me saying he's rubbish. He's an excellent, excellent goalkeeper coming up. He's going to be world class. He is. But if you just look at it, the cold hard facts of PSG's team, he wasn't needed. He wasn't needed. No, but you can't say that because that's like buying with Lewandowski. Say I don't even know how old Lewandowski is. Say he's probably about thirty three. They bring in a new young striker. Or they bought in Werner when he was available. We all would have said amazing signing because Lewandowski is getting on now. Navas, I'm sure he's getting on as well. So you need to bring in the next keeper to replace him who's already going to be at the club now. Goal goalkeepers can go into the flipping 40, mate. Yeah, but like, no one knows that about Navas. I, I, I mean, you know, is I agree with what KJ is saying to a certain extent, but then <laughs> Donnarumma on a free big man. You can't... <laughs> Big man, that is you can't say it's, it's not needed immediately because he's going to chop bench this season. Let's keep it up. He's not going to come out there and start most of their games. We all know this. Mm. We all know this. Next season and the seasons to come on for free. Nah, man, I can't. Nah, nah, nah. No, nah, the, the nah, value nah, for value. Nah. I hear where you're coming from. Player, mm. like, like it's literally mm. quality. But in terms of if you look at the whole squad, if you look at the the, the signings that they made in other positions, he, he doesn't compare. For me, he doesn't compete with those. I'm so shocked, KJ. I'm so shocked. First of all, Carlo Neves, what is he, 34 now? He's getting up there. You need to look at getting the next best thing. They have nine goalkeepers for a reason. They need to sort out that goalkeeper situation. They've had a circus of goalkeepers coming in and out of PSG over the past couple of years. At this point, they got one of the best goalkeepers, the man who won the Euros, the best player at the Euros. It just makes so much sense. I don't know how you can't put this at least at a good signing. I was going to put it as a class signing. But I'm shocked that you put it at that low. Come on, this is this is. A, what are you going to say next? He's a flop. I mean, L L F L L F C L F C Sunny put him in his class, right? Yeah. So that's yeah. that's where that's where he's going for now. Do you know what it is for me? And I'm I'm sure this is going to come up later on in the show, so I'm not going to delve into it too much. I've seen it said this summer on a few occasions: signings that are not needed. I don't actually believe there's any such thing as a signing that's not needed. I, I've never like this is the first summer I've seen fans say this thing. Like, no, we don't need that player. Say underwhelming. Wait, wait, wait. Why, why, have as a, why have it as a tier then, if you don't believe that? Underwhelming. Well, because you're allowed to put it in there. Like, I'm not a dictator. I'm not going <laughs> to allow people to not have an opinion because I don't agree with it. Otherwise, 
and otherwise everybody would be put in prison for wearing another club's football shirt because I think that's illegal. Do you know what I mean? Remember, ladies, if your boyfriend wears another club's shirt, it means he will cheat on you. <laughs> I'm just saying, right? I'm just saying he's a cheater. And I bet he puts his phone facing down when he sits down at night at home. Just saying. Just saying. Mm. But, right? Mm. Kerry, ladies, ladies. But the point I'm making is like, Donnarumma is one of the best goalies in the world. I, if you look how good he was at the Euros, if he's available, you get him. He is an upgrade on nearly every single goalkeeper in the world. He, he's better than he's better than um, Navas. He's better than him as a goalkeeper, and he's, I, I think it's a great signing. So he's in class, though. We'll keep moving, though. Big waffle, Terry. Now, big waffle, Terry. Big cheater, Jay. Big cheater, Jay. That's what I'm saying. Now, many messing. Listen, it's a joke. He's so offended. Oh, no, I can't believe Terry said I'm a cheat. Uh, you, I bet if you're watching me, your girlfriend, and she's looking at you, she's going, you wear Dortmund shirts, and you're, and you're a Man United fan. She's now panicking. She's asking to go down your phone, Jay. <laughs> I'm only messing, right? Oh, of course, some arguments tonight at home. I'm going to David next. David, I'm giving you Martin Odegaard. Oh, put him in <laughs> flop pending. I don't. He's honestly fine, <laughs> man. <laughs> So he's, I oh, oh, honestly, like, it's, it's one of those where I just sit there and go, like, why have you done this? For the amount of money you've paid, have you significantly improved? I don't think you have. Is he going to be playing every single game? No, he's not. Is he actually that good? He had about four good games. So, flop pending for me. Didn't even have four good games. Like, allow it. Just oh get him gone. Oh he's, I'm sorry. Like... He, half the uh, gal himself says that Smith Rowe is better than Odegaard. Smith Rowe is not even that good. No, wait, wait, wait. Come on. Am I gonna try and am I gonna try am I gonna try and be on the gal's side here? Or am I gonna dis- Go ahead. You know what? Just this is just for a gal. This is not just me personally, <laughs> but this is just for a gal. So have some backup. It was a position that they needed to fill. They needed another number 10. And Odegaard came in. He was very underwhelming. But at least they got someone in. Can he improve? He probably can. How much by it, I don't know. But he can improve slightly enough to help potentially help Arsenal uh, survive survive relegation. Uh, so, it's a good... If it was okay signing there, I would put it in okay signing. But, yeah. Um, this yes, is I'm trying to. I'm trying my best to get out to back you. <laughs> you know, that's a backhanded compliment. I appreciate it, though. Like, Gal, what do you reckon? Do you think he's gonna be? Where, where would you, if you were placing Martin Odegaard right now? Where would you put him, Gal? What I would have done is I would have changed from not. I would have changed the name of not needed to underwhelming, and I would have put him in that category because if that category existed, because the signing was underwhelming. I wanted James Madison. I wanted. I wanted somebody who was a goal-scoring midfielder who's already done it in the Premier League in the James Madison over an Odegaard. I'm not going to be here and say that was my first choice. But at the same time, to say he's a flop, you know what? We, the jury's still out on him. We can't judge him based off half a season. We haven't seen he, we haven't seen what he can do. And you know what? Coming back into a team that is not the best at the moment, he 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 does he does he does know some of these players, and it might benefit him in the long run for his development. I he can't doesn't lie to you. He doesn't get more than five assists. I can't lie to you, right? I, I see. I like this David's approach of agenda over facts, but if I'm keeping it a buck, <laughs> <I'm keeping laughs> it a buck. this um, nice that's a that's agenda over facts in it. But truthfully speaking, the level and standard at Arsenal is so low that Odegaard coming in obviously has to be a good signing. Do you know what I mean? I'm never trying to cause for me Odegaard once again. I feel like he played the games where he did perform last season for Arsenal was due to the fact that. This guy was like, you know what? Let's play really well. Let's get the guys at Real Madrid happy. And then you bring me back and I stay. And then he's had to go back. So I don't know how it's going to pan out. But because of the quality and the level at Arsenal, I think it's a decent sign at the bare minimum. I don't expect him to flop because, I mean, the entire team is ready to flop. It can't be that bad. You know what I'm saying? So it's um, that's just me, in it? There we go. Hey, Gal, I'm with you now. And I'm giving you your first one. And it's going to be Emerson Royale to Tottenham. Emerson Royale to Tottenham. Interesting. I've looked at his stats. I haven't really watched him play, so I can't give you a fair analysis on the player himself. But from everything that I've heard about him, he seems like he seems like a signing that is was not needed to a certain degree. They do have they do have they do have three right backs. They just got rid of uh, one of the right, one of their right backs. I don't think they necessarily needed that signing right away to improve their squad. It doesn't improve their squad immediately. I don't know if he's going to come in and kick up trees, but at the moment, it doesn't seem like it's a it's a signing that's going to improve them right away. 
So I would say he, I'm not going to say he's going to flop, but I'm say he's not needed at the moment. Emerson Royale, think not about it. needed. Not needed. The Tanga, yeah. the Tanga came in. The Tanga came in. He's doing well. They're playing with a three at the back system. Matt Doherty has already strived underneath. Wait, wait, wait. Underneath where where have they there. been playing three at the back? Tell me when they've been playing three at the back. Am I am I wrong or is Tottenham not playing three at the back? No, no they're, 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 they're playing four. They may transition to a three, which would actually probably benefit him because he is quite an attacking fullback. And the fact they got rid of Serge Aurier for a mutual termination, like they do actually just need another right back. Yeah, who, might, yeah, who might be going Arsenal? Who might be going? Who might Arsenal. be going Arsenal. He might Listen. be going Arsenal. <laughs> might be going Arsenal. Can, oh, can you imagine? But that's where Gals put him. KJ, your first pick of the day, and I'm going to give you a spicy one, an interesting one, one that's going to create lots of debate. Danny Ings. Danny, oi, Danny Ings, oi, put him in class signing, bro. Listen, Danny Ings is a quality striker in the Premier League. And when you're a team looking to get into Europe, when you're looking to push up the table and try and break into that kind of chokehold of, of the Europa League, Danny Ings is a striker that could get you there. He was wasting away at, uh, at Southampton. He was carrying them for long periods of, uh, of time when he was there. And now is his time to flip and shine. Aston Villa have got a good project going on. You can see the trajectory that they're going. And Danny Ings is someone that can fire in there. So for the quality of player to the um when you compare that to the team that he's gone to, quality signing. Listen, I, I agree with you. I mean, and he started the season by scoring, uh, doing a Rooney and scoring a over head kick. Do you know what I mean? Like he's gone in there straight away and like lit lit things up. They're one of the goal, goals of the season contenders. Uh, it's my go now. I'm gonna go KJ. Pick someone for me, please. Um, you I'm too massive too soon. Okay, no, I'm massive too soon. I'm going to give you uh, Nuno Tavares. I think Tavares is a good sign. I'm just going to go real, like, middle of the road, a good sign. I think he's talented by what I've seen. I've only seen, like, in terms of watching some of these clips back and things before he joined Arsenal. Comes in at a good price, good prospect. Yeah, I'm going to say good signing for Arsenal. He, he was one of those early ones. I think the three early signings Arsenal made, Tavares, Lukonga, and of course, um, Ben White, and we'll get onto them later. I think they were real good pieces of business. It's the second half of the window where it fell apart for Arsenal. Um, yes, yeah, so I'm going to put him in good signing there for the Gooners. Uh, comment here from Strip Bear says, just because you're more on others than Chelsea. <laughs> <laughs> or it just means like we're, we're, we're sticking it to like other teams and Chelsea players. Here's some. All oh, right, there we go. There we go. Here you strip bear. Thank you very much for the donation um, and for that super chat. So back to man like the Grand Dam now. And we're starting to get closer and closer now to some of the star players. Um, so I'm going to, I'm going to give you. Tommy Yasu, Tommy Yasu, the center back or right back. Nobody knows how good a signing is he and where would you tear him, brother? <laughs> <We're>, <laughs> so let me not say anything now. Cancel you on this thing in it, but <laughs> I don't know this guy. <laughs> where have you come from? <laughs> I don't know you. <laughs> I don't know what you want me to. You're not a good sign in my books because I don't know you, my brother. Do you know what I'm saying? But I mean, how bad could he be? To be fair, if I'm if I'm being nice, how bad could he possibly be? At the end of the day, this one is hovering between flop and. I think I got up see because that not needed. I feel like that's right there. It's sort of like a, it's like a nice wall. It's in between good and flop. Oh, I'm going. Oh, yeah. I, 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 can I afford a motion? Can I afford a motion to to the to the judge that is Terry? Uh, can we change not needed to something like Egal? It's like underwhelming or or it's something like that. You know what I mean? Because not needed is a contentious yeah. word. Um, mm. a, Model things up because this this son the way I didn't even really know. I to, when I saw that these guys signed him, I was like, "Who is this?" I had to Google him up. And the first thing that came up was some noodles from Japan. I didn't even know what was happening. <laughs> yeah, boy, the only thing about know about Tomiyasu, yeah, I swear the FIFA twenty man had like a special FIFA card or something. That's, that's all I know. Yeah, yeah, that's all, all I know. Them, yeah. That's all I know, bro. Situation. I, I, well, one second here. I've, I've changed it to underwhelming. So we can move him and put him in underwhelming. I've done that. Yeah. By a popular yeah. demand, we've changed it to underwhelming. That's where Tommy Yasu is. Go on, Igal. What are you going to say about Tommy, boy? 
okay, I'll just tell you, Tomiyasu is a hybrid of a center back and a right back. He's very, he, he's very much two footed. He can, he, he's good on the ball. He's tall, so he can, he's good aerially. The only weakness he really has is probably his crossing ability to getting the ball into a box. That's gonna be, he's gonna struggle with that. But everything else, he's, he's an overall good defender and a good right back. That's that's what I heard. I mean, you've given us a lovely breakdown. I can do that for a lot of people. But did you know him before you? Like when you heard the announcement? I'm not gonna lie to you. I'm not gonna lie to you. I heard we, we were linked to him and Tottenham were linked to him in, in the middle of the window. I checked him out then, but I didn't really look too much into him. Bro, this guy. See, I'm just gonna chuck him in underwhelming. I think that's that. For I didn't know him. It's underwhelming. Like all this thing you've given me, we can do this for a lot of centre backs and right no, backs fair. and full backs and everything, but. He's not it, man. You know what I mean? This is why I feel like, you know what? Let me not get into that because I'll get to other players as well. But nah, you know what's interesting about what you, like, I did a bit of research on him when Tottenham were looking at him and mm. he looked really good. He looked really, really good. The, the problem that you've got is Spurs weren't prepared to play above. The only thing that was putting me, putting me off slightly was the fact Spurs were not willing to pay above 15 million pounds for him. So they weren't willing to give more money than what Dan James cost. Um, so that was my only right, real slight concern with it. You know, it was, it was Dan James level money. Interestingly, I don't know if you, have you guys seen the PR spin that's come out today from Arsenal via The Athletic. Have you seen it? No, so it's, it? it's, I've seen AFTV and AFC stuff share it. It's basically breaking down how, although Ben White cost 50 million, Ooh, I Rams saw 37 that. I million. Saw that. I saw and that. I thought, I thought, I saw that. <laughs> There's two elements to this this hmm. article which I love. One, I love how they've they've spun this PR that actually Varane's going to cost 100 million over his contract, including fee, and Ben White's only going to cost 67 million. Therefore, it isn't as expensive. And they're absolutely right. One, it proves that net spend isn't real because it's about the oh, the total cost the total cost of a transfer as opposed to um as opposed to it being about the initial upfront fee but of course Varane's going to be more expensive he's champions league Varane <laughs> he's world cup winning four times champions league winning la liga winning playing at real madrid at 18 Varane ben white was i think on loan at notts county or something at 18 years old like i i actually don't understand how arsenal fans think it's a win to put that it's like you're comparing them as equals do you know what I'm saying? It, I couldn't believe it. I could not believe what I was reading. But it also proved that net spend isn't real. That's what I focused on more. Harry, they were just comparing the financial. They weren't comparing the player's ability. No, but what? No, 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 no. You are by comparing the two together. You, you're comparing it to say our player is going to be £33 million cheaper. But you would pay £33 million more to increase the level of player to Varane. You should be, Varane's name and Ben White's name shouldn't be in the same article. Because you are comparing the player's ability by saying, actually, we got a better deal because our guy is cheaper. Right. Listen, I, I look at it differently. I look at it, the situation. What they're doing is they're looking at the financials of this deal. You're looking at it. Oh, my God. How are you? How dare you compare two players that are nowhere near each other? But you know what? People do this all the time. They always they always compare players uh, sale value to what they expect from them. But even no, the financial, the even, is, but even so, sorry, David, but even in the financials of the deal, it's not like Man United are overly playing Rafa around something ridiculously stupid. Like we're giving him what he's worth. So even for comparing the, the finances make no sense because we're giving a Champions League winner Champions League money. No, but you're forgetting, you're forgetting the context that he has one year left on his deal. You're getting him on a cut price. It makes sense. He got, he got, see, what you, see this is, <laughs> let's keep it very simple. You don't bring up to topics here with regards to money if you're not trying to make something look better than the other. You don't do that. That's exactly what that article is. Why on, uh, I don't care. See, even if you spent 20 million on Ben White, I'm like, why have you done that? It's the same thing. You might have spent 67 M's and Man United have spent 100 M's on a World Cup winning centre back. It's a multiple time Champions League winning centre back, La Liga winning centre back, and you're comparing him to Ben White. I don't care if the difference is 100 M's. That is the point of the article. So you don't need to come in and try and make it look all nice and smooth. No, no, no. And if you want to bring it back to just money, it also doesn't compute because if Ben White's as good as Arsenal say he's going to be, within two years, he's getting a new contract and pay rise. Meaning that sixty-seven million pounds is going to increase 
exponentially anyway. So it purely Arsenal fans are like, oh my God, we actually got an amazing deal. You, you've signed a really good player in Ben White, a very, very a good player who could become a very good player. There's no doubt about it. But his name being mentioned near anyone of Raphael Varane's ilk, winning ability, quality, I just think it's desperate from Arsenal Football Club. I really do. But viewers, what do you think in relation to that? Smash that like and share button for us, please. Um, Ade here says, Chelsea fan here. Um, but I think Tommy Asu is going to be a good player. He seems very aware of the danger which Arsenal lacks. Um, but I think he has the pace. So, based on that super chat that's been put in there, Tommy Asu is going to be moved up into good signing. That's the way the tiering system works here. Thank you very much for that donation to the Football Terrace. Keeps us going, keeps us alive. So, thank you very much indeed. Next, we're going back to LFC Sunny. And I'm going to give you... Hakimi. Hakimi to um, I'd put... I'd put... He's very young, and He's like 24. I'd put class signing again. Just all the signings PSG have made are class signings. I watched Hakimi play a couple games as well. This guy going forward is better than most wingers in the Premier League. He's not even a winger. So, for me, it has to be in class signing. He's young. He's already one of the best right-backs in the world. He's He's already there. Uh, yeah, I don't think anybody's going to disagree with you on that. Quality player indeed, especially going forward. David, back with you, and I'm going to give you... Ooh, I'm going to give you... Dakar. Pats and Dakar to Leicester. Interesting. The, the thing is, I feel like he'll become really good, but f like in one or two seasons when Jamie Vardy... Well, we, we presume Jamie Vardy falls off because he's 36 now and it's getting ridiculous. But... He's a good striker, came out of Salzburg, great numbers coming out of Austria. Obviously, we're not sure those transfer over to the Premier League. I think he's going to be a good signing for Leicester. I really do. I think I think I think he's got his pace is like when like people haven't seen it yet. When he actually like tries to run in behind, it's it's no it's not even funny. Um he just again it's just finishing. He just needs to, you know, get finishing because we've seen pacey strikers come over and not be able to transfer over. But I think he's gonna be good. So yeah. Good signing for me. Yeah. That, that is fair. That is fair. Yeah, it's very, very I feel fair, like in, in context, in that context, it's difficult because like in context of all the other signings, like all the other top signings that like the top clubs are making, you, you put it there. But I feel like for Leicester, the amount of money they spent, how old he is, I feel like he's a class signing for Leicester as a club. That's what I'm thinking. But it, good it, signing, that is fair. Do you know what I mean? That yeah, but fair. the only thing that's keeping him from being class for me is obviously we don't know the... Like David said, we don't know how he's going to convert from the Prem. With Danny Ings, someone like that is around the same kind of ilk, same kind of club. Yeah, yeah. You, you know what he's going to deliver in the Prem, whereas Dak is a very much a big question mark. You just hope it as well. Sonny, he was heavily linked with Liverpool. Are you gutted that he's gone to Leicester and FSG didn't step up and buy him for, for, your, for Jurgen Klopp and, and your team? Not even just him. I'm glad we didn't really sign anyone else other than Canate. Like, it's not even Pats and Daka. Literally any other player, really, I would have took at this point. So, obviously, I'm a bit gutted. I've seen his numbers in Austria. I think it was they were like 30 goal contributions in 28 games. And he's like, what, 21? So he's a mad player. He probably will do a bit to Leicester, but if not till about four years from now. Yeah, I mean, we'll, we'll see with him. It's going to be an interesting one. I think good signing is a great place to place him. Uh, that's currently where we've tiered everybody so far, ladies and gentlemen. Keep yourselves tuned in with us. Let's get this stream past at least 500 likes, please, by smashing that button for us right now. Going back to Egal, and we're going to be giving you... Hmm, Christian Romero to Tottenham. Okay, look. They needed a center back, so I can't put him in not needed. I'm not going to say flop because he has been good in Italy. But at the same time, we don't know we don't know what he's going to do in the Premier League. We still have to wait and see. But as of right now, it looks like a good signing. I'll, I'll, I'll say that. Especially the fact that they got him on loan. They didn't have to pay anything up front. It's a really good signing. I'll give him that. You, I mean, anyone disagree with good? Thinks he should be higher or no, lower? He's class. He's class. You see him in the Copa America of Argentina. He is class. Yeah, and, and it's not even a thing where Messi carried Argentina. He was solid at the back with Martinez in goal. This guy is probably going to bring Tottenham from, you could argue it's not that much higher because they've obviously lost a centre-back. But say they still had that centre-back, what's his name? Oldeval, however you pronounce it. 
he would bring them to the next, next level, like top four. But because they've lost him, it's a little bit low on that. But he's a class signing. Like, he's going to be one of the best defenders in the league. No, but Sonny, you also have to remember, centre-backs take a lot longer to adjust to the Premier League and a lot of players take time to adjust to the Premier League. So centre-backs... Well, I don't agree with this guy. Not necessarily. Might, might be Not a little necessarily. bit... Uh, for me, for, for me, when it comes to Romero, it's the fact he's coming out of Atalanta that slightly worries me. But it could also be a massive benefit. I'm, it, it's a weird one because because they play so expansively, like he's used to having to defend one on one. But like with Nuno's system, when it comes into a quite defensive system, I'm not. I, like, I don't know how he's going to translate over. He actually might be quite an average defender overall. It's just that when he's having to chase people down, he's quite good at it and he knows how to track people. I don't know how he's going to transfer, but I still think he's a good uh, signing for Spurs. Are we just going to think... gloss over? Are we just going to gloss over the fact that Sonny said, "What's the name of that centre back?" Oh, no, I, I don't know. I knew his name. No, I didn't really... know how to pronounce his name. <laughs> <laughs> it was a pronunciation I couldn't be asked. <laughs> Like, do you know what? Like, I think Chris again, Romero is a player that's so well touted, so well respected in Italy. And I tend to be a little bit, and maybe it's a little bit ignorant, but whenever I hear a, a Italian punditry rave about a defender, I just have this natural proclivity to believe them that they're very good at defending because they're, they're the nation of great defenders. Um, you know what I mean? Uh, one on Terry giving a gal all the Spurs players to put them in lower tiers. Uh, listen, that's no, I'm, I'm testing people's biases here, their knowledge <laughs> here. That's the point of it. That's the point. It's easy to give everyone their own players. Um, but a gal's put him in good signing, ladies and gentlemen. I'm already looking at Romero, where my trump card currently might go. Um, that's what I'm thinking. Back with KJ now. KJ, I'm going to give you Ben White. <laughs> Ben White. <laughs> Why is he laughing like that? <laughs> ah, listen, 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 listen. I'm going to put him in underwhelming. Underwhelming. Because he is a good player. But for 50 million pounds, 50 million British pounds, 50 million Queen Elizabeth's face on the notes pounds. 50 million for Ben White is way too much, uh, in my opinion. So he's good. He's not 50 million good. So he is, for me, underwhelming. You know what I'm saying? That's where I put him. What are you saying, Agal? I mean, KJ isn't saying anything that I haven't heard from maybe 80% of Gooners on social media. So would you agree that at 50... And you have to look at this. It's who they're going to how much they're needed, in, in your opinions, how much they cost, the impact they're going to have, is £50 million for Ben White, in your opinion, underwhelming? Or, because he's £33 million over five years cheaper than Varane, is it good business? Personally, I feel like I, I, can't, I can't come on here and disagree with KJ because I've said the exact same things myself. What I would say is, in this situation, I thought we could have spent the money better. We, I, I never thought we actually needed a centre-back, Terry, when we first linked to him. So now that we've spent $50 million on him and he's been in the team for a little bit while, I've tried to turn myself around to it. But personally, myself, I was also underwhelmed and I think we could have spent the money better. I do agree with him. There we go. And, and nobody else has said anything. So I'm just going to leave. No, nah, you know, because like, they want to like, say like what's... Ben White. No, it's like Ben White's a good player, but he's a dramatic overpayment, which just puts him down. Like, you've now set him up yeah. for a stage where it's... This, this guy yeah. can't defend. What are you talking about? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what are you talking about? This guy, yeah, he signed up, yeah. He heard what was going up against Chelsea. He now started going around Brighton looking for things to lick up. Oh, I can't, I can't play. Fam, this guy, <laughs> listen, listen, listen. Don't even try it with me, fam. 50 mi- In a window, right, when Liverpool signed Canati for 36 M's, United Pat and Varane for 34. You went out there with your whole chest and your Arsenal crest and signed Bell White for 50 mi- Arrest my kids before I get suspended. No, let me, let me, let me, let me say this though. When it comes down to it, you can't judge a player based on one game. Yes, it's he's... not on one game. It's not on my club. See, Lampard tried to sign this guy. You can advance search me from months ago, almost a year ago, bro. I've never rated him, and I'm not going to start okay. him. I'm not going to start cooking him after he signed for Arsenal because okay. truth be told, and are you satisfied with this? Are you satisfied with this? Bro, I did not want him in the first place. To be fair, but I'm what I'm going to say is. 
what I'm going to say is I'm going to try to make sense of it for everybody. Arsenal for years have been trying to avoid paying the English tax. The one time we pay the English tax was uh, is now on Ben White. And, and then back uh, and then back that with another signing that's English. Then we pay the English tax on Ramsdale. So this window, it does look bad to a certain degree because we overspent on English players. But we've gone to Europe and tried to get defenders and it hasn't worked out. So this time they said to themselves, you know what? Why not? Instead of getting burnt in Europe, we might as well buy a player within England. Get burnt in England. <laughs> There's no point going to Spain to get sunburn. I can get it in my back garden, mate. Like what? No, well, well, you get what I'm saying. No, I, listen, listen. You know what I think I, I agree with you. Know, you know, you, know you go to like a restaurant. You know you go to a restaurant. You Uber pay, and the food is not nice. Like you know what's for the experience? This and that. That's what you're doing with Ben White. So they will come out here and try and paint it. Paint. Don't paint no nice pictures. This picture is not a nice, big man. Just take it as it is, right? It is an underwhelming sign, massively underwhelming. And I can uh, say worse things, but obviously I'm going to keep my mouth shut. Neek Sports here says, Arsenal went to Brighton with 50 million and didn't come back with Basuma. Uh, it, it, honestly, it's like Jack and the Beanstalk, isn't it? Went to the market with a cow, come back with beans, bruv. Do you know what I mean? It's uh, That didn't end well. Didn't end well. That's actually one of the only fairy tales that doesn't end well, really, does it? You know what I mean? No, the giant. Well. He got the golden... Did he? Yeah, he got the golden eggs, but... Yeah, the dying, man, but, yeah. man, man escaped. He escaped with his life. He was a you thief. Know, Basically, what well, we're celebrating a thief. Do you know what I mean? Wait, 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 listen. Everyone, <laughs> went, yeah, hang on, hang on. Hang on. Just... Everyone celebrates Robin Hood. Robin Hood was a benefits cheat. Do you know what I mean? I don't know Or let me not say what I'm about to say about, about thieves and acceptable. Um, anyway, let's keep going. What? Okay, no cool. We can touch on another time. Uh, KJ, mm -hmm. pick my next person, please. You're skipping the whole me. Oh, I see how it is, Terry. You did Ben White, didn't you? Oh, I didn't just do Ben White. That's how much yeah, you shows how much you want to talk. Anyway, um, I'll give you Emmy Buendia. Emmy Buendia. Again, I think it's a good signing. I think it's a really good signing. One of the most expensive of the window. The fact they beat Arsenal to him. You know, he was Arsenal's number one creative um, choice. We know that because it's the first one they went for. I love how they spun that one as well. They suck at no, he definitely he's third or fourth choice, but we bid, bid for him first. Weird. Um, I'm really, I, I think he's going to have a very, very good season indeed. So yeah, I'm going to put him in good signing. I, he can't be class. I don't. I, there's pe other people that are all remaining on this list that are going to be dominating that area. But yeah, good signing for me. Good signing. Good signing. Uh, back with the Grand Dam, and we're starting to get starting to get juicy now. I'm going to give you. Ramsdale. <laughs> Tammy, please, please. <laughs> oh my god, listen, you guy, you're finished in my hands, man. Let me tell you that right now. You are finished in my hands. Ramsdale, no, that's chucking straight in flop. Chuck him straight in flop. I don't even discuss that one. Chuck him straight into flop. Honestly, respectfully. Ramsdale, I like to see as a human being love and guidance in it, but bro, chuck him in flop. How have you done that? There are keepers that are on free. Like, they don't have a contract, professional contract. You went out there and spent that. Nah, talk him in flop. We're not even discussing this. Moving on. Thank <laughs> Moving you. On. We don't need to discuss this. Talk him straight. Thank you. Flop. And the gal, look me in the eye and tell me I'm wrong. I dare you. Look me in the eye and tell me I'm wrong. Tell me. You can, listen, see with your chest, you can't see. Listen, listen, bro. The jury's still out. You could, you, could, you could make a fool out of yourself in this statement. Or I could be making a fool out of myself by saying he's not going to flop. At the end of the day, we don't know what he is. We, all we've seen him is at relegation we side. We do know what he is. All we've seen him is competing with uh, and playing in relegation sides as a goalkeeper. We haven't he seen made Sheffield United a relegation side. Shh. They finished eighth this season. You know what is, you know what is, you know what is. My thing is like... See, I don't know what you can say making full up. See, listen, I've been clipped many times. <laughs> I've been clipped too many times, so that's not my problem, in it. For me, based on what I've seen, anybody can come have your rights to reach your story, girl. But with this guy, look how much you spent. I've seen literal footage of this guy. I actually, you know, I saw a comp in it, and I was like, you know what? I don't just play as a comp. I went back and watched some of his footage. His best performances, bumble club. I can't believe what I witnessed. Brother, this guy is not a class goalkeeper and you spend that much money on him. Oh, maybe he might turn that well. Potentially he could, 
Potentially, no. it could turn out well. No, it's possible. I'm sorry. But bro, based on yes, what I've I'm seen, sorry. this guy, based on what I've seen, especially with that back line you might have got there, fam, with Benjamin Black or White in front of your back line. Fam, you lot, that guy's stopping. Let me tell you that right now. Clip it. Okay. No, 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 he is. No, he is. He is. I'm sorry. Before yeah, you go, yeah. I have to say this. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, um, bro. Well, I call, it, I call him Pickford's little brother for a reason. Man's got the short arms, the short sleeve, and the dead trim, bro. He's got all three together. That's what he's got. His save percentage when he was playing for Bournemouth and um, Sheffield United Sheffield, yeah, right. was terrible. Absolutely terrible. And I know just like, oh, talk about specifics. Well, let there's the specifics. His save percentages are ass. And you've spent 30 million on that. For what? A little bit of distribution, bro. I'm pretty sure if I go out there and it randomly, I'm pretty sure I'll find a player, bro. You know what I'm saying? Oh, like, I'm sorry. It's not good. It's not good. Flop. There not we good. go. CLFC Sunny, I'm coming to you next, and I'm going to give you Sal Neguez to Chelsea. You see, I don't rate this signing. I really don't rate this signing. For me, Sal Neguez is like the football player version of a rich tea biscuit. Like, he's got a big name, but he's a dead player. Whenever I've gone to watch Atletico Madrid, he's either not playing or he's playing rubbish. He's always a massive name going around. It's only because he's been around for so many years. He's going to flop at Chelsea. There's no way he goes to Chelsea and even starts in that midfield. Had not had a Jorginho, not had a Kante, not even had a Kovacic. Who are the Chelsea midfielders? Name me any, because they probably start over him as well. So on Aguez, Liverpool were looking into him, so I had to do my research then as well this summer. Still nowhere near good enough for what we would even be looking for. We didn't even sign a midfielder. So for Chelsea, he's not starting for them, and he's a almost for me a guaranteed flop. Ooh. Can anybody smell that fresh Italian sea salt? I'm feeling it from Sunday. There's, no There's no I salt. There's no salt. Do you know what it is like? I can't lie to you. The last because I'm objective in it. The last 18 months for Sunday Wales has not been good. Let's keep it up. It has not been good. He's not been the best player in and around town. But this guy came on loan from Atletico Madrid to be a backup in Chelsea's already solid midfield. Any midfielder we were signing, right, any midfielder we were going to sign was going to be a backup. Saul, in my opinion, especially under Tuchel, see what Tuchel did to um, Rudiger last season. See what he did to the likes of Christian Silax and other players in and around. He elevated their game. Saul has changed his environment, and you can't sit there and tell me that a free midfielder who has shown class at Atletico Madrid over the previous years, before he had this recent run, will be a flop. It can't run. At the bare minimum for me, I think you can put it at the end of good signing. For me, I feel like what he's coming to do at Chelsea, you aren't expecting him to come in and start and play like 90% of games. Absolutely not. As a backup, I think he's suitable, isn't it? You've got to put context into the thing. I wouldn't have paid that money for him, obviously, obviously not. But I feel like it's going to be a good sign. It's going to be a good sign. I mean, I care the price. Like you, yeah. only you, only you only pattern one player in it. That's why you're sorting like this. I feel you. Know? No, so no, 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 I, 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 I get the bias. But you're saying, re you're saying recent runner form. You can't say the last two years is a recent run of form. That's almost most of his career. That's like all of his prime years. He's Wait, coming to Chelsea what? now. Wait, what? what? It's like 28, what? isn't he? That's 28. Yeah, so he's in his he prime years. 26. Those last, brother, those, yeah, he's, those he's last two problem. years, or those last that two years, he's coming now. into his prime years at least. He's going to be coming to Chelsea in the worst form of his life. And the only reason he's coming to Chelsea is because they're going to pay him what he thinks he's worth. Sonny, he's 26. How's that most of his prime? 26. 26 is a prime year then, isn't it? Brother, you're you said, you said, no, you said most you of his prime years. Howlers. Last two years, 24 to 26. He should be performing at almost his highest level. I swear Do he's you a watch Salah, man. I'm Salah, 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 I'll sell our money, your players. Literally, how old are these brothers? What are you talking about? Where was Salah, man, Salah Mane are wingers. Wingers work completely different to midfielders. Completely different. Now nah, I'm finished. I'm finished. Wait, no, 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 no. How was no, your I mean, prime I years? Nah, nah, how nah, was nah. your prime years? 24 to 26. 24 <laughs> to 26. You should be, look, maybe you're not at your best, but you should literally be performing almost at your highest ability. Sonny, 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 respectfully, you are so, so in your own Liverpool bubble right now that you're trying to attack Chelsea signing. Just be honest. You wanted him. If he came into Liverpool today, he would be higher. No, on 
No, no, he yeah, would he came not. Into Liverpool, no, he, he played would. with Tottenham since he was four no. years old. And also, if he came no, into no. Liverpool, Jurgen Klopp would have funny. been his manager. So it's, down, it's down already the different. Microphone. Pack it in. Pack up the microphone. Thomas Tuchel is going to be better than Jurgen Klopp. You can't be serious. You can't. Oh be no, he he got to stop this. He's already won the game. One second, guys, everyone. David, what what do you make of this, David? Like, because you're sitting there with a smile. I don't know whether you agree with Sonny or this, or you're laughing at him. I'm I'm I never know with David. No, the thing the other thing is like Saul's not like. He's not coming in to be the starter. So I'm not going to expect starting quality from him. Because we've got probably two of the top five midfielders in the world right now. Like, on form right now, these two, Kane and Jorginho, have both been nominated for UEFA Men's Player of the Year. So obviously, we've got really quality midfielders. To even break into that midfield is going to be tough. And especially since um, Tuchel wanted both Jorginho and Kante when he was at PSG. So it's going to be tough anyway to break into that midfield. For what he is... He's he's got to come in and minimum be good because he's not going to be playing week in week out. He's going to come in and he's no, probably going to be an impact. Just sub. because you're not going to be a star doesn't mean doesn't give you a pass. So 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 Sunny Sunny just to clear this up, just be if you're if you come in as a as a as a big player but you're not starting, you're not good. Is that what you're saying? No, this is my prediction for him. Okay, okay, okay. okay. I predict he will flop. So, ladies right, and gentlemen, okay. Sunny Sunny has put him into the flop. Pending category. That is what Sonny thinks. What do you think, people? Get get your comments in now. Chelsea fans are not standing for that. I know it. David, you're up next, mate, and I'm going to give you... Oh, I don't even know who to give you. Rafael Varane from Manchester United. Now we're, now we're cooking. <laughs> no, no, it's, it's class, isn't it? It's class, it's class. Has to be. Top five centre-back in the Premier League. Has to be, so... You know, I, I don't know where else to put him. I don't think he's signing up the window because of certain. Champions League, Varane. <laughs> Champions League, Varane. Champions League, Varane. Hey, come on. I thought, I thought someone was calling my phone. Man. Literally, I thought, I thought that was a coach. <laughs> oh, no, no, he's, no, he's, no, he's class. He's class. I don't think he's signing up the window, but like, if the obviously if the two above him did move, he would have been signing up the window. So, class for me. How well. A gal, do you think Rafael Varane will do in the EPL this season? I think he'll do well because you guys, you guys have a whole team full of experienced uh, players throughout the whole team to guide him, uh, to guide everybody, and he'll be coming in with Harry Maguire as as, as the guy next to him, which is a very physical, good centre back. So you're gonna have a really good centre back pairing. I think he's gonna do quite well. It's just the jury's still out on anybody who comes into the Premier League. It doesn't matter how big they are, how good they are to see how they do in the, when they come into the league. And his first test was against Wolves. I want to see him versus other top teams in the Premier League. Then we can fully judge him fairly. Brother, he won the UCL many times at the World Cup. Who else do you want to see him play against? He played against Ronaldo. Lo I mean, Messi and them, brothers. He locked them off. Who else? What else? Like, is it against uh, Lacazette and Aubameyang you want to see him Bro, against I first before you determine who you play well against? Hey, Chris Wood. Nah, Chris Wood will cause him problems, you know? Let's that problem. Let's that problem. I think he's going to do well. I, I said I think he's going to do well, but it's fair to say... Anybody who comes into the Premier League, you have to see how they do in the Premier League before you judge them. Yeah, but you can say, you, but you can say that about any transfer ever. That's like, what I was saying. Like, like, you know, like, oh, you have to give them time before you judge. Fam, make up your mind, Hancock. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and, and the thing is, listen, I'm leaving that opening in case... Yeah, but, no, but listen, but you, we say class signing. Maybe it takes him a year to settle. And then he has three years of, of three three seasons where he's been, one, you know, three seasons where he's performing... A, the highest level possible for a centre back in the Prem's. Therefore, he's still a class signing. It's what do you think he's going to be? Not this season. How good a signing? Do you think he'll flop altogether? Do you think he'll just be good? Will he be a class signing? You may not pick. You might look at this list and think, do you know what? I'm going to pick up a Meccano to be the number one signings. I think he's going to be the best centre back in the world for the next ten years at, at Bayern Munich. Like it's about predicting what's going to happen to the player, bro. So, how good do you think Varane's going to be in the Prem over the next five years? I'll make it easier question. I think if you guys win one major title, then he's been poor. If you guys win anything <laughs> no, with him, he's been poor. I love the cow, you know. <laughs> if, you guys, if you guys don't win the Champions League or the league with him, he's been poor. No, but how do you think wait, wait, he's going to do? Is it, what, how good is he going to be? Not if puts a maybe, he's how, say. I think he's going to be good. But if you guys don't win the league or the Champions League with him, it's, it's been a... Hey, hey Gal, you should have come, you should have come home courts with me the way you're talking. You're impressive. Oh, right? oh, let me, let me, so, Bro. basically... No, but that's true. Hang on, whoa, whoa, hang on. So, so, no league, no Champions League, not good. So you, No, that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying he's good. Oh he's good. That's what you just said. No, you just said that. 
he's good, Terry. But if you guys don't win the Champions League or the league, it's underwhelming. So Mirza Ozil was underwhelming. Yes, because he under, yeah, at the end of the day, you look back at it and you say to yourself, we didn't actually accomplish much with him. Alexis Sanchez, Alexis Sanchez, 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 Sanchez underwhelming. Alexis Sanchez lit up the league, but we never won the league. We never won the Champions League. That means he was underwhelming according to your logic, isn't it? Wait, 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 wait. Let me ask him this. Let me ask him this. Would you have said that when you signed those players? No. When you signed those and, players, you have high aspirations for them. And, and that's where we're asking you to, to, to view it from. But guys, I'm being consistent here. You can't say I'm not. Let's let's keep it moving. Brother, you're you're not, what I want from you. are just as consistent as UK weather, man. You're bloody bro, consistent. Bro, you're you're literally like, Nigel Farage in there. Answer, answer the question. <laughs> how good do you think Varane is going to do in the Prem? Listen, I'm just I'm just mad you got my French center back. But yo, long story short, Manchester United, if you don't win, if you don't win the league or the Champions League, I, know, I need you. you to answer these questions. How <laughs> good know. do you think he's gonna be in the Prem? I think uh, he's gonna be Boris good. Johnson. I said that. There, we, there, there you go. Don't put no, stop. 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 Just stop. Good. Thank you. Good. Cool. That's all I wanted to hear. We have a super chat here from Ade. Ade has said, Sal is a good sign-in. No need to explain. So he's been moved. He can only move that one category for the five. He's been put into the underwhelming mark there. Move Wendy at a class signing. The guy is going to absolutely pop and already scored a total banger. So Buendia has been moved up there straight away into class signing by our brilliant audience and our wonderful viewers. I'm going to Egal next. Egal's getting his next pick, and I'm going to give Egal. I'm not going to give him a Spurs player this time. I'm going to give Brian him. Gill. Sorry? Is Brian Gill on the list? Of course he's on the list. Give him to me. Okay, Brian Gill. I'll give you the oh, Spurs. Young, superstar, second best young player in the whole of Spain. Give me your thoughts. Well, Lot pending, you second version of Lamella. This guy is a winger, doesn't even score goals, doesn't get contributions. Yes, he might impact the game overall and everyone might gas him next to Pedri, but he's going to flop in the Premier League. I'm telling you right now, Tottenham, they get all these wingers like Bergvijn and these guys, they come in with high names, high aspirations, and they don't do nothing. Son has been successful with them, but majority of them don't do well. I think this Brian Gill guy, you look back at his career, up until this point, even Serie B level, he, total goal contributions is 11. Let's be real. I don't think this guy's going to come in and do anything. The Premier League is going to be too too, too strong for him. He's going to get bullied off the ball. I think he's a flop pending, and it's going to take them four to five years before they realize it. You just described so, it. So, so, so when... <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Now wait. he's described so it, guys. One line. <laughs> when, we're talking, when we're talking about Ramsdale, it's, oh, we don't know. He has that time to adapt. When you talk about Varane, oh, he needs that time to adapt. You can't fully say. But now it's buying Hill because he pays for Spurs. It's he is this. Talk about consistency, my brother. Ah, oh, get out of here, man. Look, look at this comment. This, this, is this comment here is the best comment I've seen in a while. Wikipedia merchant. <laughs> Listen, I love that. I love that. You can say what you want to say, but I came prepared. I brought you facts. I brought you statistics. What else no, do I don't have a do? problem with that. I have no problem with what you've said. You're entitled to the opinion. This is no echo chambers terrorist, right? Why can't you give a straight answer like that on Varan, though? That's what's annoying to people. It's not my choice. That was not my pick. Now, to be fair, that no, was I'm still asking pick. you to give an opinion. I'm still asking I, you to give an opinion. There, Terry, I gave an opinion. You didn't like it. That's the reality. You didn't give an opinion. You didn't give an opinion. You didn't say how you think he's going to do. You said if you don't win something, then he's underwhelming. That's, so you saying we won't well, win anything. That's my opinion. No, Terry? no. Say, no, that's not an opinion. That's not an opinion. Right? It, it, it's not the kind of opinion we're looking for. If you just said, I don't think Man United will win anything, therefore... That's an opinion. You didn't make that claim. That's what we're saying. Yeah, right. Gal, you created a question out of it. Yeah, you created yeah. a question out of an answer, bro. You're moving like right. Prime, bro. <laughs> right. Okay, so move... Brian Gill, bottom of the bottom, put him first at the ah, bottom. Cool. Okay. Oh, KJ, back with you, and I'm going to give you Jack Grealish to Man City. Oh, why would you do this? Ah, oh, man like Jack. Super Jack. Jack from Brom. My guy. Ah, uh, why that's so sign for the scum that frustrates me. Um, let's just be honest now. Let's just see how he is. He's gonna be class. He's going to be class. He's going to be class for Manchester City. He, he's he's training under he's training under Pep. He's already got some of the most natural ability we've seen in the England player like in recent in recent history. He's up there with one of the best players in the league. He was doing that while at Aston Villa. Now look what he can do at. at at Man City, he's already got some goal. He's already got a goal, even though it was a bad touch. But hey, um, he's already got some assists. It's gonna frustrate me seeing him win titles, man. Um, 
100 million was hefty, but over the I, I can I'm assured that over the years that 100 million is going to look like an absolute steal, unfortunately, for everyone else. So, yeah, um, class signing, man, class signing. I, I mean, oh. You know, the problem with things like this is like, if I start talking about Jack Greedish, it's like, hey, that me this and that. But truthfully speaking, I feel like it was an unnecessary signing. I genuinely felt like if City were spending 100 M's, they're spending it on the striker. Jack Greedish is obviously a lovely player. We saw what he did at the Euros when um, Southgate actually did play him. But at the end of the day, 100 million pounds on 26-year-old Jack Greedish from Aston Villa? Mm. I don't know, you know. I feel like it was overpriced. Genuinely speaking, I feel like that's not the sign that City needed. So to chuck him in class, yeah, is a class move for him as an individual to progress to a team like City for such big money. But it's not like City were crying for a player like Jack Grealish's profile. Grealish loves to be on the ball. He likes to be on the ball consistently. And Manchester City, right, they play like one-touch passing football. Is Grealish really going to set into that quite well? Only time can tell. But for me... I think he's a good signing, yeah. but I can't understand why people have chucked him in class. So. Yeah, yeah. That, it's one of those ones where you can't... You're saying that it's different to what Man City have, but then you can't complain that Man City have too many similar players. You know what I mean? So now that the buys have a different, it's now, oh, he's not the similar player like X, Y, Z. So, like, the 100 million thing is steep, but again, this wasn't a negotiated 100 million. They didn't negotiate that. That's what they had to play due to that release course in his contract to get him. So mm. it's, it's a lot of money. But they did what they had now, to do. Do you know what? Is, 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 mm. oh, do you know what? Sorry, da sorry, Dami. This goes back to my point earlier to you, though, KJ. City have signed a player for a hundred million, not for free, but for a hundred million. They already had an abundance of creativity, and you're like, it's class. But when PSG signed another class goalkeeper, it's like not needed and unnecessary. I think both are necessary because you can never have too many quality players, even if in the medium term it creates a problem where. You get an unhappy Bernardo Silva, but if, if Jack Grealish works and you sell him on, you've always got to look to. I agree with you completely. I think he's he's a class bit of business. Although I still have him as my, I got a feeling he might flop. Like I, mm -hmm. a class bit of business, like it makes sense to do it. It makes sense to go after Jack Grealish. I watched him for England last night, and the only thought I had running through my head was, why didn't he start against Italy? Like that's all I could think. I'll try not to be negative because he was really good last night against a very hostile. Crowd and a team, by the way, that barely conceded goals at the year is hungry and good. And we yeah. slapped the living daylights out of them. Do you know what I mean? We, you know, we, we, we kicked the racist amount of few of those fans easily. Do you know what I mean? 100%. But for me, it's like, I would agree with you, Terry. Plus, he's, he's, I think he's a class player, but I don't think he's a class signing. I think that's what I'm going to word. Class player, very, very good, exceptional, but I don't think he's a class signing. And nah, for I, he, other players, I think, do you know what I mean? That's okay. me. If we go, if we go by the question Terry asked us, is like, what do you think this would do into not just this season, but seasons mm -hmm. that players going to be? I can see them being class. So there we go. Thing. There there we... A, the case, the case for him flopping would be if Pep does the Pep roulette thing and he just stops playing him as much as everybody else, and he does the thing where he rotates players as much. And if that happens, he he would be underwhelming because you pay a hundred million for a player, you expect him to play week in week out. But at Man City, is one team where he might get rotated out more consistently mm. than other places. That's the only way he flops. It, it, it could be, and we just got to wait and see. Uh, I think the reason, again, that he could go into the flop pending is because of that price tag as well. Like, mm. the expectations of £100 million pounds are huge. Also, what, nigh on 300 grand a week in wages? I read in one newspaper. So, yeah, you're talking about a player that's, you know, the investment in him, including agent fees, bonuses, over a five-year period, you're, you're, getting, you're getting towards £200 million pound of an investment. Like, you expect not just him to win things as part of the team. You expect him to be a shining light in the same way that David Silva's, Yaya Toure's, Vincent Company's, Aguero's, KDB's have been. He can't be at 100 million pound and also run. He can't have a season where it's like a handful of, like, you know, a handful of good games, but the rest of the time it's it's three or four others that are the stars. If it's, you know, if Sterling, Mares, KDB are the stars and Jack Grealish is just there, that's still not enough for 100 million pounds for me. He has to become a leading light um, in, in the team. Comment here says, all this does is push up the cost of players and further increase the likelihood of the Super League is what Damien believes. Listen, I still, think, I still think a version of the Super League will most certainly happen at some point. Uh, KJ, back to you. If you could pick the next player for me, that would be amazing. Yeah, um, Sumari. Is that Sumari down there? He, he yes. still needs to get picked. So, yeah, just, just do that one for us, too. 
Uh, I'm, I'm saying I'm going to be very, very boring with this and put it into good signing. I think young, exceedingly talented. I feel like a lot of the bigger clubs in Europe were looking at him and almost let him go to Leicester. I think there's a question mark over him. So no one's quite sure. If they were, then you may have seen a Chelsea move in. You might have seen a Man United or a Real Madrid or a PSG. No one did. They kind of just let Leicester get him. So a bit like Dakar, bit of a question mark over him, whether he can convert it to the highest level of the game. But I think he's going to do quite well. Leicester City's record of signing players like Samari, like Dakar's in the past, it's only we're only more aware of these players now because of social media and um, the way that sort of information is tra- transmitted and stuff. So I think he'll do well, to be honest. I'm going to put him in as a good sign-in, very talented, um, very intriguing to see how he does uh, in, in the league. Dammy, back to you. Oh, it's getting hard now. I'm going to give you Liverpool's only signing, Konate. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, God. Um... <sighs> Jesus Christ. Um, Bernardi, I, this is the one I didn't want to get. You know what? Honestly speaking, <laughs> oh, sorry, my brother. <laughs> Just say not, class signing. Just say it. These are, tactics. these are delayed tactics. But you know what? I'm, I'm, I'm going to see it's hard because I'm thinking good or class. Good or class. Because a part of me feels like it could potentially flop in it. I can't lie. That's me. I feel like he could flop, but in the grand scheme of things, right? I'm not gonna, you know, I'm gonna chop him with good in it. But my problem with Konate is like this guy is always injured, isn't it? Like I don't see him coming to this Liverpool team. Obviously, when he does play, he's going to be quite solid. When he plays alongside Virgil or whoever the hell he gets to play along, he is a good player in the grand scheme, but he's always injured, man. He's always injured. If anything, I feel like for that being your only prime piece of business this summer. You know, me putting him good signing is kind of nice, isn't it? Let's leave it that way. If I, you know no, what? it's not nice. Let's, it's harsh. Let's, let's, let's. It's let's nice. I'm at, I'm at. It's not know, harsh. Yes, do it. Tell me what I Talk about the one. No, because no, no. remember, no, because remember, yeah. Dami, Dami, by, by Sonny's logic, if you are a backup player and you come in, you can't be good. You just can't be. So he might as well be going down there. For me personally as well, for someone who's watched a lot of Bundesliga, I've been I've been seeing Liverpool people. These man live in I don't know where these people live. Saying that he's better than Umpa Makana, I'm like, please, no, right? You can't be better than someone who's playing th- pretty much every single league game and you're playing twelve, right? It can't mm. happen. So um, you got a lot of games they did play. Are you are you okay? Are you okay? Suddenly, no, by know. that logic, why did you come? Then why are you complaining about centre backs last season? Because all of your centre backs when they played in the, in their small little bits were good, were they not? According to yeah, they, that, yeah, that was a mistake by Klopp. I never said it wasn't. No, 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 no. But hold it, no. But you just said you just said you have to judge him on the twelve games. Why because can I not judge the twenty four games that he also the twenty two games that he missed for the rest of the season? You know, you know, what's he mad? didn't play those games. No, he, he, no, because part of the problem is is that your squad is already injury prone. No, no, no. And no when you no, add no. an injury prone player to injury prone people, it don't go well. Can, ask, can I say this as well? He, he, I think you lot are overlooking the injury thing because I remember obviously I had to look into the player a lot more when we actually signed him. His injuries, I believe, I forget the exact thing what it is, but I'm pretty sure it was a group of an injury that was overcome. And then since then, he's not had the same injury again. And it's been quite a while now. And for me, for, for Dami putting him in good, yeah, look. Nah, Fair he's enough. Good, that... He's an underwhelming big man. <laughs> I you, you, you put him in yeah, 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 yeah. Wait, listen, 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 listen. No, 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 this is mad, yeah. You know what's mad? You know what's mad? You know what's mad? You know what's mad? It is, though. You're if, no, 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 wait, wait, wait. If Liverpool had signed more players, it would have been oh, good. No, but because he's the only signing by itself, we're not as really a whole, the window it's, here, man. It's, 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 it's no, no, but him no, by himself then, is underwhelming. See, You've got like four centre backs. Bro. No, 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 no. Canate yeah, no, no, for no, me no, no, will no, be no. the best centre back in the league in probably five years' time. He's probably, he's probably, he's probably one of the quickest centre backs in the league. He's probably one of the tallest centre backs in the league. And if you look at the Premier League, that is exactly what you need 
for a no. defender. And you never guess. You never guess he's learning off the best defender who already is in the oh, league. Oh, 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 wait, this wait, guy wait, has wait, every wait, single wait, bit wait, to get to that second, stage. One second, one second. Uh, Sonny, you've said that Nat Phillips could be in, uh, England's number one one day or something like that, or he should be in the England team. Virgil van Dijk's one of the best defenders in the world. You already have you already have yeah. Gomez and, and Matip. So was he even needed at that point then? Well, yeah, he was. We've seen our centre back injuries last season. Okay, but you but you've added said another guy. You said you know, well, this, but I, you've said I, to yourself I, you have four really, really good centre backs, right? And then right. you only sign one centre back who tends to get injured. You haven't improved your first team. So how is he this great signing if he doesn't even walk into your first team? Well, he's not gonna get into our first team. I think you're forgetting he's 20 years of age. That's what I'm saying. I think he'll be the best centre back in the world. Hang on, though. Hang on. That's 20 years of age. That's, you know, Bro, that's, that's pretty much like he's peak. He's peak soon, and he's he's peak in a few weeks. Like, funny, funny. But listen, Dammy has placed him. Dammy has placed him there. He's in underwhelming. I have a super chat here that says to me, Terry, would you consider Pogba at eighty mil, Maguire at eighty nine mil as flop so far because they haven't won any any trophies yet? Grealish is for the future. Well, Paul Pogba, of course, has won some trophies at Manchester United, so that isn't necessarily true. I didn't make the claim that they have to win trophies to not be a flop. I, I haven't made that claim. I was talking about being integral to your team. I just use the example of winning trophies. If City are amazing this year but don't win the Premier League, amazing next year and don't win the Premier League, and Jack Grealish is a leading light, then I don't necessarily think that he has been a flop. So we've got to contextualise these things. Uh, Maguire has improved as, as a team. Paul Pogba, I think, on, on, on the whole, has been very, very good for Manchester United. They do need to win things to cement a legacy at the football club, though, and that's a very different conversation. Do I think they've been bad players for Manchester United? No. Have they been leading lights in our team? Absolutely. That, that would be my, my, my answer to that, mate. But thank you very much for the super chat. It means a great deal to me. Sonny, back with you, and we're getting down to the, 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 the bare bones of this now, some serious players to come. I'm going to give you Sergio Ramos to PSG. Sergio? Oh, yeah, Sergio Ramos. Um... Um, I'd put I'd put class signing because I think he's a personality PSG need. I know he's kind of, you know, the aggressive type, but PSG aren't just an aggressive type. They're like an immature type before Sergio Ramos. I think Ramos comes in as like a captain. I think that's what PSG been missing. So as a captain, as a player, uh, he's not the best centre-back in the world. He's probably quite far behind that now, but he's still one of, one of the greater centre-backs. So for me, class signing. There we go. David, I'm with you next, and I'm going to give you Upper Makano. Oh, he's had st he's been dropping stinkers. <laughs> it's been really tough for him recently. Um, but Honestly, I still think in fairness, I don't think he's ever been the same since a certain Monsieur Rashford destroyed that's, him. Uh, okay, that's definitely not true because he was it's one a joke. of the best. That's why, you know why it's not true. It's called a joke. It was a joke. Right? Yeah, it's but I was just, you know. Some you'd people... be, you would be so fun at a party, you wouldn't you? Jesus Christ! I'm Jesus. great fun. I'm a great fun at a party. I'm great fun at a party. I'm really. Well, not anyway, fun. carry on. Are we, are anyway, you whatever. Um, I'm putting him in good signing. I still think he'll be good, but he has been dropping stinkers like really bad. <laughs> it has been quite funny to watch. Yeah. <laughs> there, there, there we go. I'm going to you next, Igal, and I'm going to give you Lokonga. Lokonga. Uh, I think Lukonga's a good signing. You can't put him in underwhelming because we he is what he is. He's a backup to Pate. You can't put him in flop because I don't think he's going to flop. He's already showed in a, in a couple games that he's a step above some of the stuff that we have on our bench. And I'm just going to put him on a good signing. Fair enough. KJ, I'm with you next. Mm -hmm. I'm giving you Jaden Sancho to Manchester United. <laughs> Speaking about dropping stinkers, isn't it? Dropping stinkers. All right, listen, listen, listen. Three games. He's not been great. I will be the first to admit this. But I am backing my boy, brother. I'm backing my boy. Jaden Sancho is going to be absolutely class, mate. Absolutely class for Manchester United. He just needs to get used to the way the team plays, not the league, the way the team plays, the players that he has around him. And then as soon as he does that, boom. We're going to see the assist king. You're going to see that winger that you've been seeing at Dortmund for all these years. I guarantee you this. He will be hitting 20 assists again for the fourth season in a row. 
I am saying this now with my chest. I'm backing my boy. I know, I know people are gonna put him in flop. And to be fair, I understand why people will put him in flop and, and he may not do well. But again, you asked a Man United fan about Man United player, so I am backing my guy. You know what I'm saying? Put him in class. Oh Jesus. What's wrong, Dammy? What's wrong, Dammy boy? Oh, do you know what? it's my thing with Sancho is like people do realize I'm not like for me obviously I'm, I can banter and all that but with Sancho I love Sancho a lot but in fact fun fact my account nearly got permanently suspended back in 20 was it 2020 or 2019 because I was spamming pictures of Jesus and Sancho to Chelsea in it so my account nearly got suspended off to a uh, combo the truth is like despite the fact that he's had these sort of poor run of games I just feel a part of me feels like he's just going to be a good signing for Manchester United. I don't think like he's going to be this mm. excellent top tier. I just something there's something about it. I feel like because of his age and how much adjusting needs to be done for him to actually succeed at this club. You need to remember when you play in the Bundesliga, there's a lot more space. Do you know what I mean? So much more space for you to play around with. And Sancho is obviously quite technical as well, but that sort of change, I feel like because I don't think for stars, I don't think going to end at United. If anyway, he's going to improve at United, but. I feel like in the grand scheme of things, it's probably just going to be a good signing for United and nothing more. I don't think it's going to be a class signing. Just that's just me. So there's a part of it, there's a part of the thing for me that just isn't satisfactory. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's all late tax as well. There are many things that have to play that play into part with it, but for me, I'm just doing chucking good in it. That's no, no, it. I I I I actually you're right. Twenty six is gonna be hard to do though. No, not, not in the league. I'm talking about it all together. Like, all together, he gets 20 plus assists for the last three years. I was saying he's going to do it again. He just, you just need to feed in the ball. It's that, just keep feeding in the ball. That's yeah. What I, I think people have the first two appearances were substitutions late. Like, he mm. wasn't very good against Wolves, but no one was good. Like, Greenwood got the goal, three goals, three games, but he wasn't very good in, in, in the Can't game. Say that, Terry. Can't just say no one's good, so he can't be good. No, I'm. I'm. No, listen, I'm, I'm making the point that he hasn't stood out like a sore thumb at being bad, other than the fact that we're all watching him because he's this new fresh signing. I'm not going to write him off after one start where he didn't rip things up. I think that's a mad. I, I've noticed three seasons running now, the threshold for fans to start calling players flops has eroded to one match. You know, a couple mm. for a year or so ago, it was literally two or three years ago, it was easily give someone a season. Then it was like, we'll give them until Christmas or November. Now it's literally two games in, and the agendas for players are flop already. A start, it's, it's a madness. It's, it's, Lewis Mad, you could literally have five good games as a player, a new player in a, in a team. As soon as you have one bad game, see, totally it's a flop. That's it. You know what I mean? It's, like, it's, it's crazy. It's, very mad. it's crazy. But Sancho has been put in class there. We have a super chat here from Slim Reaper that wants. Wants Konate moved down into flop. Konate has been moved into <laughs> yeah. the flop category. That was category. That was tactical. Into the flop category. Someone says, you called Grealish. Yeah, I, I, I know I get that. I'm not basing it off of one performance, though. I'm just, I don't know why it's a hunch thing. And if somebody wants to call, somebody wants to say, I think Jack Grealish is not, that Jaden Sancho isn't going to make it at Man United, that's fair. Saying, I watched him in one game, therefore he's not going to make it. He's ridiculous. You, you've got to have more bite to your argument. Like I've said, I've got a feeling Jack Grealish might end up being an also run and a, an also run at 100 million pounds. Same as Jaden Sancho, by the way. Sancho plays and he's just good, but there's four or five stars that, who are leaps and bounds ahead of him. That isn't good. That, that's just good. At the very least, it's good. It isn't great. It isn't class. And at 70, 80, 90, 100 millions, you need class for that. I'll be consistent. I'm always consistent uh, in my opinion. He's always going to be a little bit overrated because your fan base will always sell him as a, every fan base will always sell their big signings as a good player. So he'll always be. Yeah, you know about that, don't you? With, uh, yeah, I know that. Martin Cantor, so. Yeah, look, and, and I can take the underrate. I can take the overrated part. I'm going to go to you next, Sonny. And Sonny, I'm giving you Lionel Messi to PSG. Oh, Dammy. Um, I missed Dammy. I missed Dammy. Oh, Sorry. Dammy. I'm going to go to Dammy. Um, I'm giving you Lukaku to Chelsea. I'm not giving that to David. Jeez. I'm going to give Lukaku oh, to Chelsea. Lukaku How good a signing is that for you? I haven't said anything bad about Lukaku. I mean, Lukaku, I, I mean, I'm not going to chuck it. I'm going to chuck in class. I mean, it's a class signing. Like, anybody that disagrees with that probably just hits bold people or they just want to have an agenda against Chelsea, honestly speaking. I've watched him play in the Prem before. Chelsea, and we watched him play in the Prem before, do you know what I mean? And he was quite good in the Premier League. Like, and this is a Lukaku that was not even playing at a very at the highest of levels. You know, coming from he has always been a goal scorer, one of the highest goal scorers in the Premier in Premier League history, for God's sake. So 
he's coming into this Chelsea side that needed a striker. Yes, he's not Erling Haaland, but for every Chelsea fan that's watching this, they will agree with when I say that this is a class signing because he now puts Chelsea in a position to challenge for the Premier League. So, yeah, it's a class signing in my books. Go what, are you, what are you saying, Sonny? You seem to disagree. I, I disagree. The dummy no, thought I agreed with him there. No, no, thought, no, 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 no. Bro, bro, dummy thought bro, I agreed with him there. Because I didn't see, I no, 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 it doesn't what doesn't watch him or something. If you've watched Lukaku play in the Premier League last time he was here, you disagree. For me, it took him two games to fall over his first touch again. I know where he can go in. One hundred million pounds. Maybe if he was sixty million pounds, I'd give you a good sign in something like that. But Lukaku is not the striker Chelsea should be looking Ooh. for. They might as well have kept Giroud. I would rather in that Chelsea team, Giroud up front, who's much more aesthetically Bro. pleasing, especially would match that Chelsea team better with the wingers than Lukaku, who oh took two God. games Terry. to fall over his first touch, which is, was his biggest problem when he was at Man United. In the Premier League, Terry, Terry. you cannot afford to fall over your first touch. Terry. And Lukaku, who's done it inside two games, it's going Terry. down the same hill Terry. that Man United did. When he was playing good for he Belgium, scored a couple goals for Belgium last Terry. night, Terry. and then we he see him for Chelsea screen. again. Maybe one good game in about three games, but that's not good enough for 100 Terry. million. Terry, put me back on screen. Brother, do you watch football on your radio? What's I watch the Kaku. You watch football on your radio, fam, without the screen. That's your problem. Why are you so salty? Why are you so... What are you... What What have you just said? You're you acting like we haven't spoke, watched Lukaku playing this exact league. Brother, if you watch Lukaku, right, and you oh. actually go and see how we perform that Italy, you would understand that his game has changed. Are you watching games through Internet Explorer and you're watching them four mm. years ago or something? Is that what you're doing, big man? All I can hear is so. In fact, you know what? I'm not going to take you seriously because I'm convinced this is straight bias. I can't. Put your head. Bam, I don't that green screen wire. Yo, yo, it's so. Off. No, no, no. Nah. You can't call me nah, bias nah, nah, when nah. you're saying you're he's a class sign for 100 I'm million quid. I'm finished. How can you? Oh, my. Jeez. Uh. Oh. Fam, what's wrong with <laughs> you? What's wrong with you? Look, I right, get it. You want him to do Why well. You, no, no, no. Damn it. Oh you want him God. to do well. I get that. Look, if, if we sign oh, Lukaku, I mean, I wouldn't call him a class signing because I don't expect him to be a class signing. But of course, I get where you're coming from. You want him to do well. But unfortunately, with, with Lukaku, we've seen him in the Prem before with Man United. Falling over his touch every single game. He's coming back to haunt him again in the same Brother. league. It should not be a surprise to you. Brother, what's wrong with you? What did you eat this morning? Have you it had shouldn't be a surprise to you, Damien. Are you shocked, sure, fam? What are you talking Oh, fam. Oh, oh, yeah. Well, I love people. how you think he's performing from a team, man. I know I'm keeping myself We've done this. So, Lukaku's oh, been put into class. We're down to the final two now. Sonny, we are going straight back to you. Lionel Messi. Where are you putting Lionel Messi? I'm going to try to answer the Ronaldo one at the same time because obviously that's for David, I'm pretty sure. But for Messi, I put him in class signing because with PSG... Is you've got all the players <sighs> there who can win game. everything you've already got. Messi, for me, doesn't complete that team because I think that team was already completed once they brought in the likes of Ramos, Hakimi, Dona Roma, and the likes of that. So I think that team's already complete. Well, Messi is like the best bonus in the world. So I put in class son, and Messi's obviously Messi. I don't really have to say much about that. Guy, you're so, you're David, out. I'm giving you're you Cristiano Ronaldo. Unfortunately, where it looks like we're not having a signing of the summer because um, yeah, you can't sign like like Messi is he's you signed the best player in the history of football, so that is the signing of the summer. Um, Ronaldo is very good. Ronaldo makes Man United favourites for the title, in my opinion. Um, but I just don't think he's better than Messi. And Messi was a uh, Messi was yeah I know he wasn't free but it was a free transfer. Ronaldo was twenty mil, and Ronaldo's very good. Ronaldo like Ronaldo's amazing. Like, it's just that Messi exists, unfortunately. That's my only the, thing with it. The question I, I think the, the question I think we need to ask ourselves between these two players because we both agree they're the two greatest players to ever play football. You know what I mean? If you're older than that, older than us, then maybe you think Maradona and Pele. But get off your wheelchairs it's and yours and my friends. And white, them black and white TV. You really, and it's time for the young ones in colour to be talking about the goats now. Um, which one you think would have the most impact at the club that they've gone to? I think that's the only thing that can separate them because we both know the levels Jesus. are ridiculously high. So because I do, because no, because is, I think is, is the question is: Is time. Messi going to be the one to push 
PSG to the to the Champions League, or is mm-hmm. Ronaldo going to be the one to push Man United to the Premier League? I think that's I, how you separate the two. I think it's more likely Messi pushes PSG to the Champions League than Ronaldo is to the. See, the, 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 the I hear your point. Do you know what I would say as well? And people are going to obviously say I'm being biased on this as a Man United fan. Before uh, Messi was the final signing, barring Nuno Mendes, they were already favourites to win their league and the Champions League before Messi arrived. Man United went from being four favourites in fans' eyes to being the favourites in the Premier League by signing Cristiano Ronaldo for £15 million. I feel like in terms of when you look at sign again, when we when we think about we've got to keep the same logic here, this is what I'm saying. Emmy Buendia has been put into class, Danny Ings has been put into class, but neither of those players are on the same level as anybody else on that list. But they're there because of what they're gonna do for Aston Villa as an example. So I don't know how you, David, can look at look at Messi. I know Messi's better in your eyes, and I respect that. But they were already the favourites of both those tournaments. Ronaldo comes in and suddenly you've ripped from writing Man United off to saying they have to win the league. Of course he's the best signing then because you've literally I, elevated the team from fourth place to first. I never had Man United at fourth. All right. Well, you didn't have a win in the league, did you? I had I had you at second. Okay. So, so we've gone from second to winning it in your eyes. Where yeah. Messi's just gone in it. They were already winning it to they're already winning it. I, again, it's a fair argument. But for me, it's like you Messi is just like Messi for me is just in a different planet. Like completely, like completely different. Yeah. You sign Messi, you get the signing of the summer. That's what just me personally. I I under, I fully understand your point of you sign Ronaldo. Ronaldo, Man United have gone from fourth for most people to first. I understand that completely. I get it. If 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 I wasn't such a Messi fanboy, I'd I'd agree with you. But for me, when you sign Messi, like you just do have the signing of the summer. That is Messi. So. That's just me. That's me personally, but I can. But again, I can see. I can see both sides of the coin. I'm not sat here saying Messi okay. is far and but, clear away. So. Here we go. Yeah. You know, it's David. Like you don't even need to go into the technicalities of Lionel Messi. This guy just knew how. See, nobody here would have bet a single pound, right? Ever that would see this guy putting on a different jersey. Messi. Do you know what in me, Ronaldo? See, I have my utmost respect for Cristiano Ronaldo. You understand? I rate them. I don't when people ask me go, go I don't get involved because I, I believe that two legends can coexist peacefully. So I'm gonna let them do that thing. We've seen Ronaldo move in and around the country. So I'm not gonna say that him coming back to United is not special, but Lionel Messi just moved to PSG for free. Yeah, but why, so though, Danny? Why? Why? It's from but it's Barcelona's own fault, bro. It's one of this literally because of Messi, right? This has go. This is going to go down as the greatest or the most shocking transfer that we have ever seen. Keep it yeah, but up. not yeah, but not for positive Keep reasons, bro. Keep it up. Enough. None and of you use it in football it, context. Yeah, yeah, but the thing is, not for positive reasons. Messi, all say like business context. Lifted, he's literally lifted up. See. PSG, right? Let's keep it above. Nobody was expecting them. You know what? Man, and Messi signed. When Messi signed, everybody was like, if PSG don't win the Champions League, they're finished. Club. Isn't that what started happening? That's exactly how the conversation started off. That is exactly how the conversation started off. I didn't yeah, hear what? anybody talking about it. Obviously, we've always got PSG to win the league. But this season, as Messi has signed, they're like, you know what? If you can't pattern it. Messi literally is coming into this team and trying to shift him back. You know what? To I, I, you know what I you understand how powerful I, that I, is? Under, I understand the Messi impact 100%. I think the only thing I disagree on with David, and I disagree with anybody that says it, is this notion of the way that Messi is like this miles and miles clear of him. I I, I just find that so disrespectful um, mm. to, to, to Cristiano Ronaldo. I'm Anyone that says he's better, I, I totally respect that as an opinion. But when it's like... But essentially, you're saying, you know, Ronaldo's here, like Pele's here, Maradona's here, Messi, there. It's like, it, I just feel like you're reaching, you're stretching too far with that argument. But we have left it with nobody in number one. Nobody is in the number one spot. However, we have had some super chats. Right at the top of the show, we had a super chat from a Chelsea fan who put Lukaku into the number one spot. So right now, Lukaku has been moved into the number one spot. However, we had a super chat. So it cost five pounds to get him out. There's a book on this. Five's then been put in here by Centurion for Jack Grealish. So Jack Grealish has knocked him off the number 
one spot as it stands. There's been a lot of other super chats since this one came in. None of them are placing people, though, as far as I can see. However, now there is one here. Has to be CR7. Not only is he going to break, uh, going back home to where he all started, the manner of the signing, City bid was amazing. Nudges him ahead of Messi. So that's Ronaldo now moved into the number one spot. Jack Grealish out. I want to make sure I didn't miss the others. Strip Bear said, show us the, the, the table, which I did. Another one here. I can't read this one out here. It says, man, say it, it's, I can't say, I can't say those words. I literally don't know how to say that. We had Sonny is talking out his butt. We had Sancho might just be the next Timo Werner. EPL is different from the German league. That was um, from, I can't read the name. It's so small. Uh, so Amanda, that was from Amanda. Um, we had JP that says, Sonny, what are you smoking? Pass it over here. So in terms of super chats, though, as it stands, Cristiano Ronaldo is in there. It's going to cost five pounds or more to get him out of the number one spot. You've got around 10 minutes remaining of the stream, ladies and gentlemen, to get any changes you want to this team. But I do want to talk Ronaldo for a minute. because We've got a different kind of crew on here today. I want to start with Sonny. We see him score a brace for 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 um against Ireland last night or the night before one of the last two nights and what I st what stood out to me massively on that was there was a tweet that was put out during the day and it was a picture of AWB and Luke Shaw and it was like said something like let's just hoof it in the box it's okay Ronaldo's in there oh, yeah. and we literally score, saw him score a brace by doing that where two average crosses were in the box and he gets on the end of it do you think he's good enough and will he score enough goals to make to help to, to, to lead to Man United maybe winning the Premier League? I can't tell if United are going to win the league or not yet. But since Ronaldo, I think Ronaldo was like your most recent signing. Before that signing, I was like, Man United should be title competitors now. But when they signed Ronaldo, I have no question about it. Manchester United should win the league. Or you can question about sacking your manager or moving players on. Because Man United, for me, are now by far the favourites to win the league. They have to be. Ronaldo, Varane, Sancho, I think there's another one in there. You've pretty much signed the most informed players in the world. Not only are they the best players in the world, they're the most informed. And you're already joining a squad who's just had a good season. So for me, if Man United don't win the league this season, it is a massive failure. And Ronaldo completed that. So I suppose we're all in agreement. Ronaldo is the best signing in the Prem this summer then? Yeah, yeah the Prem, yeah. yeah. Uh, okay. And Dami, what, what are you saying? I've got some super chats here. So it's now going to cost £15 to get Ronaldo out. Because Zach has put that in there. We have a bid that's come in here from Centurion. says, Messi number one, Grealish can say class. That's only five. That's going to cost £10 now to get Cristiano Ronaldo out. Artem here has come in as a Chelsea fan, though. And he says, Chelsea needed a striker. They got a top five striker in the world. Conte transformed him. Tuchel will improve him. Lukaku in to number one. So that's it. Lukaku's into number one. Cristiano Ronaldo is out. It's going to cost £10. It's going to cost £10 to get Lukaku out of that position as it stands right now. Uh, someone here says, where was Leon Bailey? Yeah, I could have put him in. I didn't actually, just because we didn't want to have too many because of time. Uh, but yeah, very good signing as well. Currently, Lukaku leading the way. 10 to get him out. Thank you for the donations to the channel, ladies and gentlemen. It means a great deal to the football terrace. But Dami... What kind of impact do you think Ronaldo is actually going to have in the Prem? Do you think he's too old? Do you think he'll, he'll come back? What, what are you saying? I like how that beef food super chat. This is ridiculous. But yeah, man, for me, at the end of the day, like, Ronaldo, I can't lie to you. He's going to come into the league, but he's not going to... He's going to have good impact at United, but it's not going to be the impact everyone is expecting. Does that make sense? I feel like yeah. some United fans, some United fans, I'm not talking about you guys, but I've seen, I know some United fans are like, Ronaldo is coming in 25 goals, 25 assists. 30 goals, 30. That's not happening. It's not happening. I don't see that happening. Ronaldo's going to come in, all right? AJ is smiling. Better smile hard, didn't it? You know, coming from because you know it's not happening, big man. At the end of the day, you can get this guy coming through and it's going to have an impact. But one of my problems right now is like, watch this. Ronaldo signing is probably going to kill off Bruno Fernandes for you lot. What Fernandes was outputting is going to go down massively. It's going to drop down drastically. When you watch them playing in Portugal, Fernandez, nobody's chatting about Fernandez because Ronaldo is the one that's there and he's going to be clouded by the exact same thing. So don't think about Ronaldo adding to Bruno's um, goal involvement. If anything, he's going to cut that short and you're going to have an extra, of, what, 10 wow. or 15 goals. So that's how I'm feeling that. I feel like Ronaldo is going to be quite a positive, positive um, signing for you lot, but it's not going to be 
as excellent this, as a lot of people think it is. This idea of Bruno's numbers going down just because Ronaldo's there, but just because look at them at, at Portugal is is a bit of a myth because the way that they're playing Portugal is completely different to the way that we play at Manchester United. We don't know how how Oli is going to be planning to use both of them together. The way the way that Oli, um, Bruno's used in Portugal is more of a eight midfielder, you know what I mean, and roaming around. For for Man United, he's a number ten slash shadow striker. We we could see those two linking up better than we do for Portugal, and then therefore it means Bruno's numbers will it go down? I don't think they'll go down. I think they'll round sound um, no. remains around the same. If they go down, it's going to be pretty minimal because you got to think Bruno loves his hero balls. He loves his spam crosses that people like to say. And guess who he's going to be hero balling and spamming crosses too? So, you know, yeah, I think, Dammy, Dammy, you make a good I mean, look, you make a good point, Dam. I, I think you do. I did some research into Bruno Fernandez because people just a lot of people were trying to make these claims that he was just scoring <clears throat> or assisting other people's goals. So if he wasn't there, somebody else would be doing it. Since Bruno Fernandez arrived, if you look back at the previous two calendar years, because he obviously joined in Jan, so go back two calendar years. We have scored an additional 32%. So 32% increase on goals scored by Man United since he'd arrived. So he increased their outputs of goals. So yes, some of these goals, other players would have scored if they weren't there, especially the penalties. Somebody else would have been scoring the majority of them penalties. But he he helped to increase our goal output by over 32%. I think, we're, I think what we will see, and we can only compare this to, you know, we go back from now to when Bruno started and look at how many goals we've scored. I think we're going to see improve again. Maybe not as much as 30%, but I think a good 10, 20% increase. Ronaldo, like Messi, like all those Lewandowski's, Suarez's, Zlatan's, those elite scorers in, in modern day history, those players score you goals. Out. One of the things that Harry Kane's so good at He'll score you goals that you shouldn't be scoring. Goals that are like, like half chances, putting half chances away. Like he did against Ireland last night, an average cross loop team. You think, well, that's going to be cleared. And out of nowhere, this guy leaps from flies through the air like a salmon and gets his head on the ball. Even if he scores five or six like that, those five or six goals could be in games that save us losing or take some a draw to a win and ele elevate us by seven, eight, nine, ten points. So I I'm really intrigued to see how he does. Viewers, we have five minutes remaining. Ronaldo's now back on top because of Zach there. Tend to get him out. Put your money where your mouth is. You are supporting the football terrace in your endeavours. I know that a lot of you love to do that. So a massive thank you to all of you. Uh, back to Dami. What are you saying, bro? Hmm. I, I hear you. Do you know what I mean? But do you know my thing is that I'm, I I agree with what you said. Like, because for me, like whenever I talk about a lot of people like, because like I said, I like whenever I'm not joking around, I like to be very objective. With Bruno Fernandes, obviously like, his impact is second to none. But my thing with United, the way you guys set up, the way you guys play, there is not enough space for two individuals, okay, to do... Bruno Fernandes, the reason why he's so successful, like, like everything goes through Fernandes. Fernandes is allowed to take a multitude and many different types of passes, shots, whatever. Ronaldo is going to come in and do what Bruno does, but better. Mm -hmm. Fernandes, if anything, the only statistic that I don't feel will get caught off for Fernandes are his assists. Obviously, those are very crucial, but I'm not expecting Fernandes with similar goal output because Ronaldo and Fernandes do very similar things. Ronaldo takes quite a lot of shots that don't pop up, and Fernandes does the exact same thing. Bruno, if anything, Ronaldo is going to absorb most of Bruno Fernandes' statistics. That's the way I'm looking at it. Do you know what I mean? I'm not saying... Mm, mm. Mm. When you say about the whole the, the shooting thing, which is, a, which is a fair point, you got to look at who has Bruno been playing with already. He plays with Marcus Rashford, who, again, who takes a lot of shots from, from ridiculous ways he shouldn't, and also plays with Mason Greenwood, again, who takes a lot of shots from places he shouldn't, and, and, and maybe he can play off. So in terms of but that means, if Ronaldo comes in, that means he's going to take more shots than Bruno, and therefore um, things will go down. Bruno's been playing in the team where people take shots from wherever, so I, that's nothing new, if you know what I'm saying. I, I hear that, but let me, I, maybe I didn't wear my point. What my point is, right, Mm. Fernandez currently holds, or before Ronaldo came in, he held the master card, kind of like mm. Mata at Chelsea in 2012, 2013. Everything went through Mata. Everything is not going to go through Bruno Fernandez as Ronaldo is around, and because of that, the number of his contributions are going to reduce. That's how I see it. Uh, do you know what though, mate? Like, I, I don't even think it's a bad take uh, at all. Mm. But as long as my team improves, I, I can. Yeah, your team will improve. Yeah, yeah. And, and that's, like and, said, and, that's and that's improve. the thing yeah. for me. Like, I. Bruno will want to score all the goals, but if you are, I bet if you were to ask Bruno Fernandez now, like, would you take scoring 15 less goals and winning the Prem? 
I think you bite your hand off for it because the irony in it is, he, look at all them goals he scored last year. And all we got told by rivals was, where's the trophies though, bruv? There's no trophies. It doesn't mean anything. You know, what will happen this year? We win the Prem. It'll only score 10 goals in all comps and it'll be, ah, oh, but he, he flopped though. Like I can already see and smell the narrative around it already. And for me, it's like, as a Man United fan, it's just something I'm not overtly interested in. Uh, the irony is the Man United fans that don't like Bruno, they want to see him deeper, scoring less and somebody else doing it because they think he could do a better job. But you won't see them push that narrative if it ends up being the case. For me, but as a Man United fan, not a player fan, I want all my players to do well. But if we improve with Ronaldo coming in and we, and we, win, the, and we win the league, if we win the league, I couldn't care whether Ronaldo scores one goal or no goals. I just want us to win. Like, do you know what I mean? I think that, that's the most important bit here. And yeah, yeah. it's going to be intriguing to see. We've got one minute remaining, ladies and gentlemen, if you want to get any more Super Chats in one minute from now before the end of the show. Terry, let me just say one thing on this one. Oh, I, th I think we're all talking about the Manchester United systems, everything else. These guys just got a 20 goal, go a season goal scorer walking into the team, 30, 40, however many goals he's gotten in his whole career per season. That guy walking in solves a lot of their issues when it comes to attack, when it comes to beating low block teams. I'm not putting them as favorites, but Cristiano Ronaldo, people belittling Cristiano Ronaldo, what he's going to do at Manchester United is ridiculous. He's going to be the top goal scorer of the league. He's going to come in and be, uh, be the leader of that team. And what happens with Bruno, everything else doesn't matter because at the end of the day, he's going to be carrying everyone to a higher level. You're going to be competing on all fronts now. It's no longer this Manchester United thing. I don't want to hear about Oli Tax. You guys, you guys have been confident. And one thing I want to say also, Terry, KJ, I told you guys the Glazers would look at this option. No, and, uh, and you guys and you guys said, and KJ, specifically you, you said this is not going to yeah. happen. Yeah. Because okay. it's this. And it didn't okay, happen. No. Okay, no. happen. Yeah, no, 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 no. Listen, listen, I'm going to address this. You said that this is going to be the Glazers' grand plan um, to win the Premier League. This was not the Glazers' grand plan to win the Premier League. Could it, could it happen? Like you said, it happened. Yes, it, it, it happened. But you was making it out like the Glazers are going to go out with their full-on might and their mind power and be like, to win the Premier League, we need Cristiano Ronaldo. They have not done that. They stood up upon an opportunity that happened to be Cristiano Ronaldo. That's the thing I'm fighting against. It's not a Glazer grand plan. It's an opportunity that has worked out. And it happens hey, to Jim, you wouldn't Ronaldo. like FSG. You wouldn't no, the, like oh, no, FSG. The thing is, Egal, those, those situations aren't remotely similar because Tom Brady is, uh, again, because of the way the contracts work, he's, one, he's pretty much one season, one season, one season. And he was 44 years old and he was in a contract year. So it was, you know, he was going to move on to somewhere eventually. The Glazers went, we've got an opportunity here because we can get Antonio Brown and so on and so forth and add to the team. Ronaldo's only came about because at the end of the window, Ronaldo said, I want to leave. Yeah. And the plan yeah. was for him to go to Man City. The only yeah. reason he went to United is because United very late on said, well, we'll make a move for him anyway. Like, it wasn't a planned situation. Yeah, It was just that, an opportunity, an opportunity that, arose that, and it came. Yeah. I'm pretty Next sure if, if, if Real Madrid came in and, and put in the offer and said that we'll get Ronaldo instead, instead of it being Man City, I don't think not, um, United would have gone in because I don't think United would have seen it as such a massive issue. But when it was City, it was like, mm. those are our main rivals. We can't have this happening. Yeah. So and it's not it's, especially uh, what has how, just has how, happened. Yeah, but however he's ended up here, you know, if he delivers how David expects him to, or, or says he should, if he delivers how Sonny says he should, if he delivers how I think he will, then it will have that impact. Like irrespective of how he's ended up here, it could end up doing that for us. And I think what I'm really intrigued, what I love about the Cristiano Ronaldo nonsense is how in his latter years, as he slowed down, as he's not as nimble as he once was, even though he's still bloody good. People have tried to reduce his career and they forget about all the things he did. A bit, a little bit similar to the way people criticise Ryan Giggs as a football player, where people speak to talk about his last... I remember having a debate with a guy who came on here. I can't remember who it was. It might have been Ford, Chelsea fan, who spoke all the things he said about Giggs, negated the first 12 years of his career. <laughs> they, it ignored all the things he did when he was a younger man. And Ronaldo has done it all. And I think he could still score goals. I do think in the league, he'll be the golden boot scorer. And I think he'll score over 30 goals in all comps for Man United this season. Um, I really do. We did have a last super chat that came in here. It says Messi and Ronaldo have achieved everything except the World Cup. But I'll always have, have a Ronaldo clear because um, Messi stroke group stage Messi um, goes to many 
too much big matches is what Lamar says there. We're not going to get into a debate on that one. Everyone who's tuned in, thank you very, very much indeed. Uh, the Grand Dam, thank you very much, my bro. It's sunny as always. David, Egal, KJ. We're back tomorrow. I'm interviewing tomorrow. I've got to get the time to it. But Mark Bosnich is on the show tomorrow night. Former Chelsea, Villa and Manchester United goalkeeper is on the football terrace tomorrow afternoon. So make sure you're tuning in for that. We'll put out some details a little bit later. Ronaldo voted in as the number one signing by you, the viewers. I'm happy with that. I can't, Look I can't. Look at Canate and Flop. What the f Yeah, no man. Liverpool fans stepped up. No Liverpool fans wow, stepped up. The two nights running. Liverpool fans ain't tuning in right now. They must, I don't know what it is. Maybe they're sad. Maybe they're standing away. But there yeah, we no, go. Imagine they put Gerard in the bin. In Who did that? Wow. wow. <laughs> Listen, until next time, take care. Goodbye. God bless. And we'll see you all.